Welcome to the Intuitive Teacup, my friends. These tarot readings are meant to motivate, empower, and inspire you. Please keep an open heart and an open mind as you watch these general readings, as some material will resonate and some might not. Do have faith it is serving someone out there and take away only what resonates for you. Please release the rest. Feel free to book a personal reading with me if you would like something catered specifically to your inquiries and energy. That information is down below for you. You are responsible for all actions and decisions and the vibe that you bring to this channel. This is optional advice or guidance, and of course, you will always have free will. Check the box below for my social media links, the decks I use, and more information on this channel. Let's hop into your tarot reading. Hello, Earth Signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Welcome to the Intuitive Teacup. Uh, we're going to do three individual mini love tarot readings for you, what I call my little sips. Timestamps are right down below so you can hop right to yours. We are going to start with Taurus. What's up, Taurus? Let's talk about your love life. We'll get three cards on your person and three cards on what the universe wants you to know about it. So your person, possibly a Scorpio, a Sagittarius, an Aries, <clears throat> possibly a Cancer. <clears throat> And I, I will tell you more, I promise, just off the cuff. Those are sort of my intuitive lookings at them. We're using an oracle deck this time just for fun. I'm mixing it up. So yeah, you do indeed have water coming up in your spread. So whether you are uh, exiting a relationship from one or considering a new one, the universe is quite literally saying, what about the water sign? So I'm almost getting that there's either significant work that needs to be done to, again, detach from one or significant effort to put in. Maybe you're trying to save something with a water sign, right? Bottom of the deck is the green man. The force, uh, I'm sorry, the forces of nature favor you. I like that a lot and perfect for it to come out in the earth signs reading. This is catered specifically to Taurus, but that to me is such an, uh, like an homage that, you know, the green man, very much Taurian energy. You are kind of mother earth, mother nature type thing. So that's cool. It says forces of nature are on your side or in your favor. Rather, it's saying like almost like you have a guardian angel looking down on you. So uh, don't, don't sweat the technique I just heard. I was going to say don't sweat the details. It will work out, but it may require a little bit of effort to be put into this. So. Let's dig in deeper and we'll clarify with some tarot here. So your person, darkness looms on the horizon. So it might be a little bit of trouble in paradise. You may all also already be experiencing that. Uh, not to say your person has to be a specific zodiac sign, but if it's not directly impacting your romantic life, it could be something on the exterior with a Scorpio, whether it's someone in your family or your best friend. You may be going through an awkward time with a Scorpio uh, or an Aries. I'm sort of getting that message here. Then you have seduction, passion, and romance await. So again, kind of like a, uh, almost like a, a contradictory thing, like, oh, something dark and scary, but sexy and passionate. So that's what I mean. I feel like there's either going to be a 180 or a rekindling with someone who you've either lost touch with or you're kind of like mending fences. That's sort of what I get from this. And then you have the queen love and prosperity so this is coming up in your person section i think it could just indicate your person's going through a dark time right it doesn't necessarily my my lighting is so bad i hope you guys can see that um very scorpionic right um as well as aries i very much associate aries with ravens that's just me personally as a reader but anyway <clears throat> and this card too it looks so aries to me um, it could indicate your person is just going through a bit of a struggle. Maybe they lost their job. Maybe they lost their puppy dog. Maybe, you know what I mean? I don't predict scary stuff on my channel. It's just, you know, let's acknowledge life happens, right? It could be just that your person's going through something that is ultimately going to result in a lot of change and transformation in their life, very scorpionic energy. But it, it's not a death sentence. Following that, you have passion and romance awaits and love and prosperity. So... For some of you Torians, it could indicate you need to let go of something that isn't great, uh, or I'm sorry, something that's, uh, hold on, I'm going to rephrase that sentence. You may need to let go of something that's just okay or mediocre, where you're like, well, I see potential in it, but it's not really growing and developing. It could, be, it could be that by releasing it, A, absence makes the heart grow fonder and you guys come back together bigger and better and stronger, more passionate, or by letting go of something that's just okay, you actually make room in your life to embrace something even better, right? So I do sense that there is major change and transformation, even the way this is depicted with the queen. What a cool card, right? Ooh, I love it. Uh, it, it, it almost uh, visually is, is striking me as the wheel of fortune. So things are changing and turning in a very positive direction. Um, some of you, there may be news of, um, of motherhood or, so it could be some sort of storyline involving your mother or if you're starting a family. Um, 
Now, something with the queen is making me think of motherhood. Uh, if And there is a message here, too. If you have been separated from your person, but you guys are actively discussing getting back together or hanging out or moving back in together, almost like a rekindling, I actually sense that you guys may end up starting a family together. Um, or I, I'm just going to say, like, there could be news of pregnancy, whether that was intended or unexpected. So just word to the wise, if this seems like this could be your story and that's not something you're looking for, there is kind of like, uh, again, like messages of kind of fertility uh, through your reading, which... That, that could even be a metaphor for something else, but I'm not surprised to see it. Um, you know, you are the Empress card, right? So uh, the Empress is always shown pregnant in tarot, for those who don't know. I didn't really need to clarify anything there. I, I was ready to, but nothing really came out. I always just kind of shuffle them to see if Universe is like, oh, like this one. Tell them that. Do you see how that's clearly sticking out? What does it say? Yeah, adding to the family. There's like a generational aspect in this. Um, give me one more on that. Spending time with your mother or possibly an, el an older or elder feminine. Um, yeah, yeah, and, and sometimes I... Sorry, I'm just going to stick with this. It does seem like someone who is older than you in age. Um, possibly maturity too, but I like this. So this is someone who's lived a longer life than you have. It could be your spirit guides too, right? It doesn't have to be someone here on the 3D. Uh, so this person may have also lost their grandmother um, or a grandparent of some kind. Yeah, there's, there's a closing out of a cycle there. And again, I don't predict this on my channel. I'm just saying if you know your person lost a family member, that's coming up. So that could be their sort of dark night of the soul. If not, I feel like this is also saying if you're going through a bit of a, a difficult time the fact that it's being shown with a 10 you're almost at the end of it you can almost drop this weight or this heavy load that you've been carrying and i think in some ways it's a, in inspiring you encouraging you uh to open yourself up and talk to the people around you talk to your family uh, get get in touch kind of with your roots with your ancestry because there may be almost like um uh, i'm hearing family knowledge I don't really know what to do with that. It feels kind of clunky when I say it, but it could be that you're going through something very similar to what your mother or your grandmother went through at your age. You know, the, the timing and life and circumstances may have been slightly different, but ultimately it, it does feel like the core of your emotions. It might be something that just by talking to someone in your family, you guys could bond over that, that similarity or something you go through. There's divine wisdom here is sort of what I'm getting to. So it could even be opening yourself up spiritually to, to talk with, you know, the other side. <laughs> if that's not a card for the other side, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, op open yourself up to receive messages from your spirit guides if that is something of interest to you. All right, let's circle this back to your love life. <clears throat> yeah, there could have been illusions about this person or vice versa. Um, I think it was uh, wanting to see the best in people, but realizing that at the time there was something where you guys just weren't on the same page. Um, but again, you you may go through a an awakening or a reconciliation where you guys decide to, you know, hold each other accountable for making changes because it does seem like there is love here. So then, <laughs> interesting. I saw the Seven of Cups, but it didn't come out. And then you have the Chimera, which is imagination clouds your judgment. So. Whatever stage of this relationship you're in, Taurus, there's a message here of not wearing rose-tinted glasses, of not projecting what you wish someone could be onto them. It's about accepting them for actually who they are and, you know, what, what they do, right? You know, that, that expression, you know, don't tell me your plan, show me your action, or, sh you know, show me your solution, show me your, what is that, what is that? Show me your results. That's the word I'm looking for. I think the thing is that message can be a little bit harsh, but the thing is, I don't think you've totally been living in fantasy land. I think uh, you, being ruled by Venus, you you are very gentle and nurturing and giving, and you want to see the best in people, and you're rooting for them, and that's a beautiful quality. But I almost think it's taken in an extreme where you may be projecting your truth and your reality onto someone else, especially for my Tauruses who have very strong Gemini in your chart. You may be unwavering about certain ideas that you have about you know, fill in the blank. And so you may be sort of pushing that or projecting it onto someone when it's almost like they're, I'm sort of hearing like, that's just not who I am. It doesn't mean this relationship won't work depending on the severity of what the issue is. You know, if it's something like, well, I want to have kids and I don't, well, that's going to be tricky. But it could be something as, you know, I want to live in the city. Well, I want to live not in the city. Like you could probably find a happy medium or a compromise. Do you understand what I mean? Um, yeah, I just, imagination clouds your judgment. I think it, there's something beautiful about what you want in this, but universe is saying it's not happening right now. So you have options, don't you? You always have free will. You can understand that, okay, I may want, I may want a dog with this person, but it's not the right time for them or we're moving. Or you can say, all right, well, this is what I want and I am unwavering about that. So I guess you're not my person. You know, those are your two options. You can either compromise or, or try someone else on and no answer is wrong. You know, no solution is wrong. You have to do what's 
right for you. But I do see, and right now, in order to make something work, there is compromise. And for a lot of you, it has to do with your person being uh, in a difficult spot regarding either a family issue or their job. And so whatever it is, you may have to work a few extra hours or you may have to be the one to cook dinner for the next several nights or, you know, whatever it is, there's something about, it's almost like you have to step up and take one for the team. That's what I get from this. And the oracle seek wisdom and guidance from elders. That's hilarious. That's literally what we just said. So again, it could be people here in the 3D who are still living and breathing and you're seeing every now and then, or it could be more on a more spiritual realm. Get in touch with your ancestors. Yeah, okay, so this is saying to me those who have passed on. Sometimes the Six of Swords can indicate uh, the, the passing of a life. Um, and again, not predicting this. This is saying, you know, if your grandma hasn't been around for 15 years, well, she's still watching over you, right? So open yourself up to receive those communications. Um, and then you have water. Emotions are at their peak. So... I mean, quite literally what the card is saying, uh, th this could be an emotionally turbulent situation. I get a sense of, for a lot of you, uh, again, you have to trust your own intuition above me, above your tarot reader, but for a lot of you, this feels like you are at a bit of a crossroads. You love this person, but you, I think over time, you've come to realize that you're just very different. So some of you have already experienced that and you're apart and the emotional turbulence is, oh my God, but I miss them. You know, was I too? Um, I'm just getting like uh, narrowly focused or in terms of your, what is a good way of phrasing this? Were you too picky? Were you too choosy? Were you fighting for your issue? But in hindsight, it was not the most important issue. <clears throat> I don't mean to offend Taurus, I'm just sort of picking up on on sort of like the subtlety of what this is saying. You may have been too rigid, that's a good word, and you know, you're Taurus, right? Let's go ahead and say the cliche word, stubborn, right? That's not always a bad thing by any means, but um, there, there could have been an issue you were too stubborn or too rigid on your flexibility, and ultimately it's a two-way street, right? You're in a partnership, and that to me is saying, I think there is a hint in my Taurus's energy that they, you do feel a little bit regretful or remorseful, um, wishing you could go back and do something differently, you probably can. <laughs> like if this is coming up in your spread, to me it's saying it's not done or internally you need to kind of gut it out and release it. If you don't plan on revisiting it, that's fine. But this energy is still showing up in your spread. So I think universe is ultimately saying, so now what? Because we're at the end of a cycle, but we're still carrying around the heaviness, right? The turbulent emotion with it. So it's almost like we, we need to um, exorcise it from us, right? We need to release it and let go of it. And for some of you, that means reconnecting with this person and, and you know, meeting them halfway and trying to fix it. For others of you, it's like letting it pass letting it almost die out because the cycle has run its course so um for Taurus is looking for new love who are completely single let's do a quick spread on that so this is kind of a new message though though it will probably relate but let's let's go ahead and see for a lot of um I'm gonna say it this way for my female Tauruses no matter what uh gender you are seeking in this you are coming up in your person spread uh, very fondly as they still think about you. Um, and they are very like sexually attracted to you, Taurus. They, they have <laughs> great memories of that. Um, and, and something about finances. There could have been an argument about finances between you. You know, what they were spending their money on versus, hey, let's save it. Let's do this. There could have been, yeah, arguments there. Anyway, sorry, new message. I get so distracted. Let's get uh, three cards on Taurus. Too many cards, but we'll take them. Okay, so you have Wheel of Fortune. Oh, wow, you have so many cards. So after a tower moment, um, and actually the thing is the Wheel of Fortune, technically the way I'm viewing these, it the Wheel of Fortune occurs and leads into a tower moment. So I know this won't make sense to all of you because it feels like you're still in the thick of the emotion right now. This was a fortuitous tower moment. So that says to me two things. The tower moment ultimately leads you to a stage of healing and realigning to your spiritual path. So tower moments are a blessing in disguise, but they don't always feel that way. This tower moment feels to me like it was showing you something that you needed to see about the relationship, but because the Wheel of Fortune is here, there may actually be something very beneficial about this tower moment where, yes, maybe it's liberation from a person who wasn't uh, healthy for you, you know, maybe it was a more toxic relationship. For others of you, it was saying, wow, we got all that kind of... Um, I'm almost kind of getting like we got all that bullshit out of the way. So now we can strip each other down and be like, okay, this is my authentic self and that's your authentic self. So do we want to make this work? I do feel like a lot of you are going to choose to make it work. Um, so then you have seven of wands. Oh God, this is actually getting kind of a uh, kind of sexual. That would be uh, very accurate for a Taurus reading. 
Yeah, there was something, there was a, like an intense, very like a uh, sexual connection here. I, I see that several times. Um, and I think, again, a lot of you, if this isn't where you're currently at, I do see it going in this direction. I think a lot of you are going to try a separation, but ultimately I think you're going to look back fondly on the times you spent together and try and get this back together. I, I just, I keep seeing that over and over. Do you have to? Absolutely not. You have free will, but the majority of the Tauruses I'm connecting with, there is a similarity in the fondness that you, um, uh, the way you view each other. It, it comes from a place of but I, you know, I'm always going to have love for them in my heart. And I do typically tell people that's a sign that you know that you really love someone is, you know, you had, you had a relationship and for one reason or another, it possibly ended, right? If you can look at this person objectively and be like, you know what? They weren't perfect. I wasn't perfect. But you know, whether they choose me or not, I hope they're happy. That's true love. Do you understand what I mean? Because it's not coming from this place of lack or narcissism or rejection and just like, you know, they lost me and blah, blah, blah. I hate to say it. I said I'm getting a lot of Scorpio energy. So you may have some cross watchers who are Scorpio, which is in fact your opposite pairing. So that may make a lot of sense. I love my Scorpios. I got a Scorpio moon. Not, not throwing shade at the Scorpios, but there's, because that card is kind of coming up for me, there's an element here of someone hasn't fully matured into that stage of, you know what? They didn't choose me, but I love them anyway and I'll be honest guys not every relationship ends that way and that is a clear sign okay that was karmic that was not true love right do you know and that's just my opinion that's how I view it as a reader but I do think a lot of people kind of share that um that idea that if you truly love someone you want what's best for them whether it involves you or not so just consider that idea because that may help you weed out some people in your life whether it's this person coming up in your spread or someone else in your life right uh, for some of you, there's a, a new relationship with a Leo coming in, and it could also be a Leo of the past, absolutely. You may have uh, bookends, you know, with, with relationships with Leos, possibly a Sagittarius, and then this came out in reverse. So it is the chariot in the reverse. So this has a couple things. Going home, going back to your roots, going back to your, again, ancestry and not even spirit guides. There's some connection there that's going to help you through a difficult situation in your love life. For others of you, you may be leaving a Taurus. Uh, I'm sorry, you're a Taurus. You may be leaving a Cancerian behind. There may be a breakup or a divorce with a Cancer, but it is almost showing up in your future card. So again, same, especially if it's a Cancer Leo Cusper, you may uh, divorce a Cancer or, you know, end something with a Cancer and actually find a new one. Or it could very likely be that you ended something with a cancer and, you know, the wheel of fortune comes in and you kind of revisit it later. And it doesn't have to mean revisit it in terms of get back together, but mentally you may be holding on to a cancer and you're, it's almost like you're being asked to look at the higher perspective of, well, what did that do for me? Why did that person come into my life? What did we learn about each other? Um, so again, I, I did ask for, you know, single Tauruses uh, looking for love. Possibly, um, I am I am wanting to say a new start with a Leo or a cancer. Answer. But even the way I'm saying that, it sounds like this might not be the first time you've met them. So they might be new-ish or it may be a rekindling. Um, so keep in mind, there is a tower card here, but I think it's going to be a tower of illumination, a, ta a tower of epiphany. A and especially with your Scorpio, maybe in Aries, there's in they're both ruled by Mars, right? And you, you have that coming through both uh, in Zodiac signs as well. There could have been anger and aggression and fighting and something ended. And, you know, it, it is a blessing, but you're probably not viewing it that way yet. You will. Wheel of Fortune says this only gets better, okay? Taurus, that was kind of a long one, but I was actually really into it. That felt like a beautiful message. So let's go ahead and jump into my next sign. Actually, I'm going to pause you. What's up, Virgo gang? How you doing? Let's talk about your love life. Three cards on your person and three cards on you or what the universe wants you to know about it. Deck's upside down. So first card out the deck is Harley Quinn. True feelings are masked. It did come out in reverse. I actually think that means the mask is coming off. You're starting to see the true side of something. I'm not going to make it dark, though. It could be someone finally reveals their feelings for you or to you. Uh, this could be you as well, but I am going to ask about your person first. So two more cards. I'm just going to split the deck. There we go. Hand of fate. Okay. Serendipity, awesome way to end your reading. All right, and then Caduceus, you will receive news from afar. All right, so why do I have a feeling you guys are super into this? <laughs> what a perfect card for Virgo, too. It kind of makes me think of the magician and also the two of cups. All right, so let's look into this. Your person, true feelings are probably going to be revealed. For better or worse, I don't know yet, so let's keep going. Uh, the hand of fate, forces beyond your control, intervene. And then the shield, you are safe from harm. All right, so, and then with this card, it says there, obviously, there's news coming in. Under it is the spider. Be meticulous and be patient. 
Okay, so there's something here about, ooh, how do I want to phrase this? Practicing patience yields positive results, but in the short term, it may be underwhelming. That's sort of what I'm getting from this. <sighs> Give me more. I don't want to dig in too deep because I'm getting two different storylines, so I, I just want to see what's, what's coming through. The Harlequin. So possibly a fire sign is going to come, th come through, and you're going to learn something profound about your fire sign. If you've been spying on one and interested in one, you may end up learning that, oh, they're engaged to someone else. Uh, or, it again, it could be something about, you know the mask is falling off the thing is i can't make this something it isn't i am getting more of a message of someone was showboating someone was pretending to be very wealthy or very this very that it could even be someone was pretending to be happy and there's a moment where you get news that's what i mean it's like you get the news and you're like it's a little bit disheartening at first and it may have nothing to do with you, but it does have to do with someone uh, putting on an image. What What is a good word for that? I keep hearing the word showboating, but more or less peacocking. These aren't the exact words I'm looking for, but someone is putting on a guise. There's a falseness of someone who looks like they have it all together or someone who looks like they're, their life is going so great. There's something where you learn, and it might not even be a phone call, the idea of getting news. I'm almost seeing it on like a public forum of like, I don't know what it is. It could even be a newspaper article or something like that. But you read or get word that, oh, this person doesn't have it all together. And for again, for better or worse, it changes your feelings about them. Some of you Virgos are going to be more uh, empathetic or sympathetic towards this person. You're going to have a new understanding of their life and why they act the way they do. Because, yeah, justice is coming through. This is uh, very karmic to me. And when you put it next to this card, which is where it fell out on, the hand of fate forces beyond your control intervene. This was meant to happen. This was always going to happen because i'm reading for your person it's almost like it's faded it's very likely a position in their birth chart aspecting something right where the mask the mask is taken off and it is showing up in your love reading right so for some reason or another this will impact your love life it now it might be positive it might be that you know that person who you grew up with who's married with kids you may find out that their marriage actually isn't that happy and that they're getting a divorce do you understand what i mean especially with this there could be a breaking up of of a marriage that i don't know if it involves you you know if you're with a fire sign maybe the thing is that's almost like you would be too close to the source to not know you know god forbid if, if you're married to a fire sign you know maybe you find out that they were cheating it could be something like that but for most of you i think this is you are an outsider to thinking that things are a certain way for this person in your life and that's where there's a confusion where you're like oh i had no idea so again i keep i'm getting this duality of like it's heavy news or it's 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 news or information that contradicts your thought, but it may actually end up working for you in the future in some way. I hope this makes sense to someone out there. And then the shield, you are safe from harm. So that's that's sort of, again, confirmation to me. This isn't... This is not going to have a profound effect on your love life in a negative way. Even if this is someone you're dating, and again, you find out that maybe there was infidelity. Obviously, in the short term, that's going to hurt, and there's going to be, you know, uh, a sort of, you know, an emotional upheaval initially. This is saying in the long term, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm hearing the universe like, you're welcome. Like, I saved you from that, so don't linger too much on the shoulda, coulda, wouldas, and how could I have not known. And you're very perceptive, Virgo. I don't need to tell you that. So, it probably wouldn't be a revelation if this was an ending with someone who you're already with, because I think intuitively you're already like, what's the deal here? The mask is about to fall off, so you will find out. Again, I want to go back to saying for most of my Virgos, this is someone either, I don't know, I think you've met them. You know who they are, but it's almost, I'm almost getting like you have a crush on them and you check their Instagram now and then. But for some reason, you think it's off guards because they're married, which good, that's a very healthy way of thinking. Only I think you're going to discover, oh, but the marriage ended or something of the sort. That's one example, Virgo, but um, yeah, this has to do with the ending of a marriage. I, I just I see it over and over and over again. Um, there's divine intervention here. So again, on the off chance that you feel like this could be you in a marriage where you're already unhappy or restless or feeling like someone is getting wandering eyes, which by the way, it could be you, right? This is confirming what you already know, and ultimately it's saying you are safe. If you feel like this is a relationship that needs to, to end, if it has just been commitment, whether it's marriage or not, 
and yeah, it's something about you. Okay, if you feel like you've had to pretend to be something you're not in this relationship, more or less, the universe is forcing you, the hand of fate, to take off the mask and like expose the truth. So if that's not you, it has to do with your person and very likely a long term commitment, um, especially with a Capricorn, a Cancer, a Taurus, a Libra, a couple signs here, Scorpio, maybe. So then what does the universe want you to know about this? Um, the first <laughs> the first card you have is unicorn, good fortune and friendship. OK, so for those who have had someone that by default, you've you've been interested in romantically, but you've had to be in the friend zone because they were with someone else. Something very good may come in the form uh, of, of an Earth King to you, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. Now, if that is you, male or female, uh, you may have an Aquarius coming in, possibly. Um, or a Sagittarius. The, the signs are not super important. I just I only say that to offer you confirmations. Um, because as always, pieces and parts of this will resonate. Not all of it will. So, you know, if there's a few sentences, you're like, yes, yes, that's me. And I say the zodiac sign. And that's like, oh, my gosh, that's my, you know what I mean? Take what resonates for you. Release the rest. Virgo. Why do I feel like I called you Taurus earlier? If I did, I apologize. It's because I'm looking at a Taurus card. So could be a Taurus. And then the mystic circle, your abilities will be enhanced. There is a very important message here of trusting your gut and trusting your intuition. If you feel like someone is being deceitful or withholding some sort of truth from you, they probably are. And I mean, ultimately, it's up to you how much you want to pry into that. You know, it, I would argue that if you already know that something is fishy, does it really matter what it is? It, it, like, it's almost insulting enough that your person isn't being open with you. That being said, I wouldn't jump to conclusions if you've never had issues with this person, because maybe they're withholding a secret that's, you know, a, a more exciting proposal, but it's not the right time. Um... What is this about? <laughs> There's an ending. There's an ending with a couple here. So I don't know if this is you or this is your person, but quite literally, this is not about gender. This is about the suits. So this could be same sex couples included. There's a potentially a water sign couple or people who have very strong water in their chart. There's a wedge in that relationship and it's ending. And again, it was very likely long term commitment or marriage. And I think this is saying you benefit from it. There's even three kings here, so all the more for my for my uh, Virgo people who are uh, is interested in same-sex partnership, specifically males. There's a lot of options here, um, and even for my female seeking uh, female seeking males, right? Um, you have three kings. That's pretty significant. There is an ending of a couple, um, and then the ushering in of maybe new partnership. Um, the thing is, I almost feel like it happens on both sides. So whether you're in the marriage or the commitment that is breaking or it's someone else, it seems like whoever is getting out of this relationship, it was a long time coming. It was, in a sense, I'm almost getting it was destined to end because it frees those people to go after uh, love that they truly deserve, love that they truly want. This can even be a situationship, <clears throat> a situationship. I love that I just said that because that, that in itself completely, um, like, completely is a uh, a metaphor for exactly what I'm trying to say. It was a situationship. It wasn't a relationship. What I was going to say was this could have been people who um, almost like high school sweethearts is the vibe. Like it's all I've ever known and this is my person and I love them. But cut to 10 years later and, you know, two kids later, they're like, I don't even love this person anymore. Like I lost sight of who I am or I've become someone else in this relationship and like I don't agree with you know what I mean it feels like this started off very quickly and there was a comfortability in oh well I know them so they're my person I feel like and my heart goes out to this person because I do feel like they kind of got the carpet swept out from under them and that they changed their mind or they realized that who they thought they were marrying it wasn't that person and it doesn't have to be this dark sinister energy it's just they quite simply changed their mind there was a contract and they decided I want out of this contract that's what this feels like the thing is I actually do like this because it's saying whoever is getting divorced or separated, you're actually making room in your life for the for the correct person to come in or for someone, I'm going to say better, right? Someone who's more in alignment with your path spiritually. Um, so there might be a water sign involved in this union, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. For you, Virgo, there may be, this is probably you the more I look at this, there could be a fire sign coming in. Uh, fire and uh, fire and earth are kind of wanting to be paired together here. And then serendipity, bright new prospects are on the horizon. Virgo, did you just get kind of a kick-ass reading? I think you did. I understand that there's a much deeper, heavy level to what's going on here. But again, I'm being called to say you are protected. So in the long run, this is going to make sense. And even if the ending has something to do with your person now, 
given some time and perspective, you're going to be like, oh, I understand. That was never for me. It's almost like the hand of fate. It blocked this person from becoming a part of my history books, a part of my family legacy or whatever, because I would have been missing out on on being with the right person. Or I, I don't even know if I believe in the right person. I think there's a lot of soulmates out there for you. But ultimately, it's making room for someone who's more in alignment with what you want and desire in life. This is awesome. Okay, I, I really like this reading, Virgo. All right. So we're going to hop over to Serendipity. I'm just going to show you that card again. It's just so pretty. I wish my lighting was better. Can you guys kind of see that? I used an Oracle deck this time around because it's. I think it's honestly my favorite Oracle deck I own, and I just I don't use it enough. It's called Madam and Dora's Fortune Cards. Um, but they're very cool, and the, yeah, it very, works very well with tarot. Anyway, <clears throat> let's shuffle up and hop into Capricorn. Capricorn, no. Okay. Capricorn. Remember to like, share, subscribe, guys, and I'm going to be doing uh, Earth Signs every Wednesday. Moving forward, short little mini love readings every Wednesday. I'm going to post, I'm going to try and be consistent when I post them, which should be around uh, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so see you next Wednesday. <laughs> no, isn't that the next, uh, no, I'm not going to go there, never mind. Is there a of a porn called See You Next Tuesday? Because it's like, see you and... Anyway, I'm not going to go there. I feel like John Landis quotes that a lot. Like in his movies, he references that. So I don't even know if that's a real thing. That could be like a movie in a movie type thing. Why am, why am I talking about this right now? Moving on. <laughs> We're going to tap into Capricorn's energy. Let's talk to those Capricorns about their love life. Seductress. Shocker. Capricorn. Okay, here we go. Capricorn, what's up? Happy New Year. Let's talk about your love life. We'll get three cards on your person and three cards on what the universe wants you to know about it. So first card out the deck is the knight, triumph over adversity. So this, this you will win, is <laughs> sort of what I get from that. But there, there is some harsh energy. Like, so I, I'm going to keep going and see where this goes, but I could, I could almost see this as you are trying to force an issue that's just not ready to be dealt with yet. And so, I, yeah, I'm almost getting there's a need to just be really chill and zen and almost uh, escape from the issue or from the argument. It's not that you're avoiding it. It has something to do with understanding the divine timing of the universe, uh, especially for my musician Capricorns. It could even be some sort of career move. It's like you're trying to launch the album, but the universe is like, it's not the right timing yet. Hold. That's what I'm getting here. Um... A temptation may lead you astray. Uh, Siren. That's a very cool card, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a dark message. So let's hop into this and see. Ending with love. Um, true love and fidelity. So let's just pair those together. This is coming up in, in um, your spread. This is coming up in your person's spread. So you may be dealing with a person who has wandering eyes. The thing is, they would be shooting themselves in the foot by acting on that. Um, I don't know. Hold on. Oracle, seek wisdom and guidance from elders. So talk to your spirit, guys. This card has come out a lot, actually. Like a lot, a lot. Um, oh, Capricorn. Let me just look at this before I... Because there's like three different storylines, so I, I really just need to give you the main one. Let's see. Okay, so <laughs> instantly it clicked. Um, I don't know if this is you or your person. I'm going to read this as your person, but know that the roles can be reversed. There is something difficult in your relationship right now. It feels like you guys aren't on the same page, particularly about one issue. I don't know if it's about jobs or money or a home or whatever. There's one issue that it's exhausting and your person, it's, I see someone literally pounding their head against the wall. Like they're never making any progress with you and it's driving them nuts, Capricorn. Because of that, because you guys can't get on the same page, it's almost like the easy way out would be to not have to face the truth of the situation and express to you, Capricorn, that your person is feeling some type of way about the relationship and possibly for some of you either thinking about ending it or trying time apart or making some significant change that they know that you would be opposed to. So instead of being truthful, it's almost like they're looking for the easy way out. You might be dealing with a Pisces. They're afraid to confront you, and so they almost think, oh, well, if I, I don't know how else to say this, if I engage in third-party activity and Capricorn happens to find out, well, at least they'll let me go and there won't be a big thing. Like it, It's like this person is not wanting to take accountability for their actions, and so they're looking for some sort of outlet 
knowing that essentially they're going to screw up in your eyes. And so that will be the ending of the relationship versus the actual issue that they don't want to deal with. There's such a, I have to be honest, like no offense if this is you or your person, there's a quality to this person where they don't like to, I don't know if it's they, they don't like to rock the boat. They don't like to take responsibility for their own life. So when obstacles and problems come up, they choose to run away from them rather than dealing with them. I don't think this is most of my Capricorns. Again, it can go vice versa. This is your person. You might be dealing with a very manipulative water sign, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, uh, or possibly another earth sign, um, Taurus, and, the, and uh, air signs too. It could be a Gemini. The zodiac sign doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, I don't like this person because they are living in a karmic cycle that is going to keep repeating because they don't learn the lessons that, you know, literally this card, triumph over adversity. There's something that is difficult. It, they don't like talking about it. They don't like feeling this way, but this issue more or less is going to keep repeating. You know, the, the, the details will differ slightly because this person is not learning the karmic lesson that you need to grow up and be a mature person and be an adult. You need to confront this situation rather than always running from it. Anyone dealing with a Pisces? <laughs> no offense. I love my Pisces. I got planets in, in, uh, in my, I have a lot of Piscean energy in my chart, but that to me, you know, whether it's a Pisces or not, maybe they have a lot of planets in their 12th house, right? There's an escape like I don't want to deal with it so I'm just going to run from it rather and uh, flat out Capricorn I know this isn't a great message I'll give you another one but this could be someone who they kind of feel like it's time to break up with you and they don't want to have that conversation so they're just going to go and cheat and hope that you find out so that way it's done for them I hate this energy no offense if this is you or your person I just I feel like this person is cruel in a sense but the thing is, they don't want to be the heavy. They don't want to be a bad guy. So they do things that impact other people profoundly, but they do it in a way where they don't feel guilty about it. Like they don't have to take the blame because they weren't the one who said, I want to break up with you. Do you know what I mean? Like they almost make it about you. It's, I have to be honest, it's very uh, manipulative energy. I don't like it. Uh, your person is very likely a musician or a poet. Um, and again, I'm not hating on the, the artsy fartsy community. I think those people are great. Those are my people. You know, I, I love people who embrace those kind of uh, unusual careers, but that's what I mean. This person is like a very sensitive soul, but they hate to be attacked. And so I, I just keep wanting to say they, this person runs from their problems. Temptation may lead you astray. Yeah, absolutely. That's what the message is here. But if you could actually, I'm going to say like man up or woman up and face your fear, face your problem, you could probably work through this, whether it ends with, hey, let's try and work on this together or you know what you're right it's time to break up quite literally this person needs to face the music this person needs to like this person needs to sack up <laughs> all right moving on so what does capricorn need to know about this strength and wisdom authority and diplomacy and love true love and fidelity i have to be honest capricorn this is not a fun reading but i actually do think it's very important um i think there's an unavoidable ending here it's just the matter in which it's done the silver lining to what is clearly a very heavy and uncomfortable message here is that this is aligning you to tr find true love because here's the thing if this is your person if this is resonating on any level it's saying to me this person has a lot of soul searching to do like this person has not grown into the highest vibrational person if anything it's almost like they've been stunted in their spiritual growth and so they're the way they react to situations, it's very like victim mentality. It's very like, you know, everything is just happening to me and poor me. And again, they may even look at you as a point of authority, even though you're dating them. This person may have mommy or daddy issues. Again, I'm sorry, cross watchers. This might not be you. This could be the Capricorn, whatever. The message still stands. This person has a lot of growing to do. So I would not look at it as a tremendous loss that they are trying to exit your life. I would hope that they do it in a respectful way because if this person really loves you, again, this person needs to man up and, and or woman up. I don't mean to make it a gender thing. Ultimately, though, the silver lining, what I'm getting at here for you, Capricorn, is this is going to allow you to recognize, I thought that was love, but nope, that was like something else. There will be a breath of... Uh, or almost, I'm getting like the term exhale. There will be a, a relief, a weight off your shoulders when you kind of understand that, I don't know, this person, it's a similar message to, who was it? Virgo, this idea of a falsity, the mask comes off and you actually see this person for who they are. And I think for some of you, this may have already transpired. You may have had a person who ended up cheating on you because they didn't want to tell you that they wanted to end the relationship. Again, it was like, oh, well, if I do this, then by default, that'll happen and I don't have to worry about it. You're going to realize, ew, like what? That is like Capricorn, my... 
<laughs> Saturn, right? The planet of responsibility. Do you see who you were dealing with? Someone who refuses to be responsible and accountable. What I'm getting at is this is going to make a way or pave the way for new love in your life that matches your vibration, right? Um, again, strength and wisdom. I feel like this card is saying with a little bit of distance and perspective, you're, you're going to clearly understand this was karmic. Uh, it, was it faded? Probably. I'm sure there was something you could both learn in the process, but yeah, I like seeing this. It's going to make way for real love, authentic love. Love where I almost feel like this, this is... This may have been a relationship where you felt like you had so much to offer because this person was so lacking. I know that makes sense, but if I'm like kind of probing deeper into the psychology of it, you felt needed because this person quite literally needed you. And, and so I think, again, with time, you're going to recognize, you know, it was great that you were serving this relationship and putting, giving your all, but ultimately, what were you getting back from it? Someone who wasn't really straight with you or someone who, again, just ran from the problems. You're a fixer. Capricorn you're a doer and so this person had it's almost like they're there was a big hole in their heart and they needed to fill it with a void and you were that person and I'm not saying they didn't like you or they didn't love you I am saying I don't think they appreciated you the way they should have but this is ultimately making you aware of of facing the music of this person and again this is a very specific reading this is not going to be everyone's reading so maybe pieces and parts of this are going to make you think about your own relationship and that's great I'm not saying break up with your person right if you don't resonate with the story then don't take away the messages use your intuition but this actually feels like a very profound found message and ultimately it does in a sense make you the victor because you you finally understood this person's game you understood this person's story and this message has come up a lot in these readings i've done particularly for the earth signs rather than being angry at them and you know spewing fire and just being very um yes being heard that's valid absolutely there's also something that's like oh my gosh like, i actually feel bad for them that's what I get from this. And it doesn't come from a place of being in the superior position, like, oh, I'm so much better. It's like, it hurts me to see that they're such a broken person. Like, I hope they can fix themselves. Like, I like I hope they can pull themselves out of that kind of, again, shadow self or, or lackluster side. Because if you truly do love them, you want what's best for them. But clearly, this person has a few things to work out in, again, introspectively, independently. Because I don't think they love themselves enough to actually face the music and, like, and be in a position to accept love from other people. And so maybe there's a mixed message there. Maybe there was a shadow side of you that was kind of impeding in this being a healthy relationship too. No matter, just have faith that eventually you will see this is aligning you to get to like the real thing. Uh, for some of you, there's a Gemini coming in or an Earth King, a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. And this, there's also a message here where it needs to be 50-50. Uh, nobody should be in a position where the other person completely relies on them. And this is important too, even for kind of like that, I'm not necessarily agreeing with this, but kind of like the age old thing of, oh, the husband must take care of the wife. That's really not setting anyone up for success because, you know, God forbid somebody passes away or there's a divorce. What happens to that wife when she was completely reliant on her husband and didn't have a job and didn't have an education or whatever? There's something about you guys kind of need to support one another, but be able to stand on your own two feet. And unfortunately, Capricorn, again, your generosity and your big heart was like, oh, I'm going to provide for my person, even if you're the female, right? But come to realize, you know, supporting your artist husband, your actor husband who's trying to land their first gig in New York, you were giving a lot and like they had nothing to give. Um, and, you know, good for them for, for trying something and living out their dream. But like they're <laughs> there's something severely lacking. OK, that, that's the message here. Anyway, let's talk about new love. For some of you, again, you have a Gemini or an Earth King coming in. Uh, so new message. Let's connect with let's switch decks, actually. I didn't even pull from uh, Rider Waite. That's interesting. That's okay. That's cool with me. Yeah, Earth. I'm seeing a lot of Earth. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, possibly uh, true love with a Gemini. Some of you may end up marrying a Gemini or someone who is very strong Gemini in their chart. Maybe they have a Venus in Gemini. Let's connect with a new group of Capricorns. So let's pull a new storyline. Capricorn, Capricorn. Capricorn. Ace of Wands. So new sparks. <laughs> 
Um, and then you have Nine of Cups, Wish Fulfillment. <laughs> what a funny Nine of Cups this is. It's funny, her face actually looks a little bit somber at first. Um, but I mean, it, it, when you look at it more, it's actually very joyful. So Nine of Cups is the Wish Fulfillment card. That's what I mean. More of your wishes will be fulfilled in this next relationship. But ultimately, you, did, you had to see what you were willing to settle for at one point of time and then course correct from that. Understand that, you know, as good as it feels to give and provide, like I need something in a relationship too. That's what you were being like... Uh, shown or awakened to sort of is what I'm getting so wish fulfillment <clears throat> uh, Sagittarius may be flirting with you or coming in to message you Capricorn you may have very strong Sag in your chart too that's possible someone who uh, works a lot in in the kitchen someone who will, maybe they own a bakery or they love to cook or they work in the restaurant industry or someone who just really enjoys uh, I, I know this sounds so silly but really enjoys the process of making food it's like it's like whenever they create a dish it's like a little work of art that's sort of what I see um, so especially if you're fire signs Aries Leo Sagittarius something about that may may be a confirmation for some of you so you're going to like uh, take like a weekend trip together, like a little getaway, like, I don't know, you're going to like rent a cabin or an Airbnb or something. And it's it seems kind of relatively early in, in the relationship, but obviously go with your gut, you know, <laughs> uh, make sure you know this person enough to be able to do that and feel safe. I'm not advocating for anything that's silly like that. But then, then you have the magician. Okay, cool. I like this because this whole idea of the mask falls off. This person who you thought they were a certain way, they kind of reveal their true colors and you learn a lot about them. Universe is giving me like a little message here of that was one circumstance and one scenario. And as painful or difficult as it was, make sure that them, you essentially tearing off their mask to learn who they really are. Don't take that mask and put it on and feel like you have to uh, conceal yourself or more or less it's being related to me as trust issues like well that person lied to me once so now I'm going to be very guarded in all relationships you know ultimately take away the lessons uh, you know maybe use a little bit more discernment again I should never have to tell Capricorn that but ultimately it's saying don't let that one circumstance allow your heart to become very cold very brittle very again guarded there's something about take down the mask because this person has very good intentions there's ultimately there's wish fulfillment here possibly something new with a fire sign or again a Gemini is really what's coming through possibly a leo it's saying don't hide behind your mask be your authentic self uh i mean that's good guidance for anyone because you're gonna know you're with the right person when you know they accept you flaws and all um it, it, there's just a message here of watch yourself regarding trust issues from the past again take away the lessons and implement them in your life do things differently so you don't end up in the same scenario and repeating the same karmic lesson that I can just tell this person is going to be repeating this karmic lesson for the next several years. Like they have a lot of work to do, but don't let that be you. Take away the spiritual lessons and implement them. Practice them in new relationships. But I do see you guys struggling with sharing your authentic self, especially emotionally. You might be a person who doesn't love to get super lovey-dovey emotionally, especially from the get-go. And unfortunately, if you're dealing with a fire sign, like eh, here's the thing. I, I don't know if I would say fire signs are emotional, mushy-gushy, but if they have passion, right? Fire they're going to let you know. Like They will set your heart on fire. So that's going to be a difficult issue if this person is all in with you, all in with you and you're kind of guarded. I think there's nothing wrong here. It's just kind of giving me a heads up like, make sure that you're very self-aware when you go into this new relationship that you're not bringing in issues from the past um you know clear out your karma clear out kind of like your you know mind body spirit you know your shocker work whatever you do like it's almost like you need to go through a cleanse from past relationships so that you don't bring baggage of that into the next one sorry for not being eloquent that took me a while to get <laughs> but yeah it could be that uh allowing that old relationship to exit your life although i really shouldn't make them the same because this might be something new essentially what this card is saying with the magician is you've been manifesting great love wish fulfillment a new spark a new excitement in love even the way she's held here there's a fear of being very vulnerable right she's naked she's all covered up right she doesn't want and again i i get that but ultimately you being afraid to be vulnerable and uh, express your authentic truth that's going to be a challenge for you in relationships so just be aware of that and work through it that's so funny as i said like a spiritual cleanse like a spiritual bath capricorn that that might be in store for you <laughs> with your person no, i'm just kidding all right and then okay four of cups and the king of cups so some of you are this the storyline i see happening here which i'm almost seeing is unavoidable a lot of my capricorns this does end happy so just stick with me here a lot of my capricorns are getting involved in a new relationship and it's moving too fast or there's something about it where it makes you feel a little bit 
anxious because it's new territory. You don't feel anxious because it's not safe. It's almost like, is this too good to be true? There's like a skepticism about this. And so some of you may choose to either, uh, I don't know if you're going to go as far as to break up with them or kind of stop responding to their text. There's almost like a, ooh, that's karmic because that goes back to the first one, right? So rather than dealing with it, right, because it's uncomfortable to be like, I don't know how I feel. This is weird for me. You may just block them or stop if you didn't watch the first love message, you may want to go back and watch that because there's something in this for you, Capricorn. I see that now. Rather than not dealing with the uncomfortable emotion, this is saying essentially you guys may have to take a, take a breath, take a second, take a day, take a week, whatever, to understand what's really going on. But then in the long run, you're going to realize, I actually really like this person. They're actually really good to me. So my... Again, me putting up my walls, it's a defense mechanism because I'm uncomfortable with how I'm feeling because I've never felt like this before. Because I'm being showered with all this love. King of Cups, the King of Love. Again, he's healthy. He's mature with his emotions. He tells you he loves you, but he doesn't smother you, right? He's not clingy. He's not needy. There's a healthy sense of how to practice love, you know, I, almost as if it were a skill. This person is like a very healthy sense about relationships and boundaries and this and that. And I think for better or worse, Capricorn, you may have dealt with people in the past who didn't. And so that's all you've ever known. But yeah, there's, um, again, it could be a fire sign or a water sign, a king of cups, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. They're coming in and they actually really like you. So just be aware, again, not to let your own shadow side interfere with how great this could be. Um, that's kind of the main message coming through. And again, the, the thing that bothered you possibly about your person of the past who was didn't want to take responsibility or accountability for acknowledging the elephant in the room, like we the love is not there anymore. Don't do that with your new person. Uh, even, and the thing is, I don't think you feel like there's no love. Again, I think this this is a message of I'm uncomfortable. I've never felt this way before, but I'm going to ease into it. Even the Four of Cups says to me, there's like a safety here. There is an emotional stability here. It's, this is a very unusual reading, but it's actually very positive. You have a lot of aces. The magician is all about, you know, the, the new start, the new foundation. Then you have the wish fulfillment with the king of cups. This seems really good, Capricorn. I'm just going to leave you with that. All right, guys, that's what I got for you. Um, please like, share, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below what resonates for you. And thanks for joining me here today at the Intuitive Teacup. I am going to, my New Year's resolution is to aim for consistency in these videos. So moving forward, I'm going to try my best to post uh, Earth Signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn every Wednesday around uh, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. So wherever that is for you. Um, so yeah, I will hopefully see you next Wednesday. Bye, guys.